Uh, so let me say good morning. Let me thank all of you for being here. Uh, the city of Houston uh, main water system is currently, as you know, under a bar water notice uh, with two caveats. This does not apply to Kingwood and neither does it apply to uh, those who are serviced by the Clear Lake Water Authority. Okay, so Kingwood and those who are serviced by the Clear Lake Water Authority are not impacted by the bar water notice. Uh, and let me kind of go over the timeline of events that triggered uh, the bar water notice. At 10.30 a.m. Uh, Sunday morning, the East Water Purification Plants 1 and 2 lost power. At 10.50, uh, Plant 3 lost power. And these are the three plants located inside the East Water Purification Plant. Uh, just before 11 a.m., the water pressure dipped below the regulatory levels of 35 PSI at 21 water pressure monitoring sites. So they dipped below 35 at 11 a.m. At 11 a.m., pressure at 16 of those 21 sites dropped below the emergency regulatory level of 20 PSI. So that was at 11 a.m., 16 of the 21 uh, sites dropped below the emergency regulatory level of 20 PSI. Pressure rebounded above 20 PSI in less than two minutes at 14 of the 16 locations. So I want us to kind of make sure we understand the timeline and what was happening here. So at 14 of those 16, where it fell below 20, 20 PSI, it, they remained below 20 PSI for less than two minutes. The remaining two locations of that 16 rose above the 20 PSI at 11.30. So 14 were below uh, 20 PSI for, two, for less than two minutes. Two of the sensors uh, rebounded above the 20 PSI in 30 minutes. For five of the 21 sensors, uh, they never fell below 20 PSI, okay? A plant electrician arrived at the East Water Purification Plant at 11 a.m. to troubleshoot the problem. Further investigation by the Houston Water found that two transformers at plant one went offline due to a ground trip and current, current overload. The electrical feeder from plant three also experienced a ground fault trip. Uh, both SABER, that's S-A-B-E-R, B as in board E-R, the electrical contractor and Centerpoint Energy were on site to investigate how not one transformer faulted, but the redundant transformer also failed. And what I'm being told, even when you have the grid providing power and you have your generators to step in, when these two transformers fail, it prevented the power uh, to the system. Power was restored to plants one and two at 12 15 p.m. Sunday. Okay. I'm, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. PM. Yes. At 12 15. At 12 15 p.m. on Sunday, and power was restored to Plan Three at 12:30. So, in terms of the power disruption, two hours, two th from 10:30 a.m. to 12:30 p.m. 21 sensors, 16 of them fell below 20 psi. 14 of the 16 stay below for less than two minutes and two stay below for 30 minutes. Power was restored uh, at 12.30 p.m. Full water pressure was restored to all three plants by 3.30 p.m. and all locations were back at 35 PSIs. Further investigation and testing on the breakers, transformers, motors, and feeders found a bad cell in plant one transformer. And I have asked for a com complete diagnostic uh, review of, the, of this system uh, to just to further verify and to identify how we make sure it does not happen again. The Houston Water field staff verified all pressures across the system. Houston Water, in communication with TCEQ, determine a ball water notice needed to be issued on Sunday evening, and that was somewhere around 
uh, 6 p.m., 6.40 is when that decision was made. Conversations with TCEQ were taking place from 2.43 p.m. up to 6.40. And it was at that point, based on the data, based on the sensors, that it was uh, a decision was made that a ball water notice was to be issued. And one of the reasons why it took that long, because as you can see, for 14 of the sensors, they remain, remain below 20 PSI for less than two minutes. And for two sensors, they remain below 20 PSI for 30. So there were questions as to whether or not even a ball water notice are needed to be issued. A decision was made out of an abundance of caution to issue the ball water notice, and it was done. Notice was sent to the public at 6.44 p.m. Sunday night. And here's where we stand right now. The TCEQ approved our water sampling plan at 10.41 p.m. Sunday night. And I want to thank uh, TEDM, Texas Department of Emergency Management, and TCEQ uh, for working with uh, the Houston Public Works Department. They approved the water sampling plan at 10.41 p.m. Sunday night. Samples were pulled from 29 locations at 6 a.m. and 9.30 this morning. Two locations, uh, and out of, again, abundance of cautions, just in case of the first sample uh, didn't pan out, uh, then we had another sample ready to go. All the samples arrived at Houston Water Labs by 9.45 this morning. The samples would then sit and incubate uh, for at least 18 hours per state regulations, and the first reads of the samples would be taken at 3, at 3, that should be 3 p.m., <clears throat> well, uh, well, we'll review it, but the first official read that we can do is at 3 a.m. At 3 a.m. to determine if the water is free from contamination. Um, those results will be sent to the TCEQ for verification and to determine if the city can rescind the ball water notice. Although there will be various readings throughout the day that will give us some indication as to whether or not um, we anticipate the end result to be a very positive one. We are optimistic the results will uh, come back clean. Uh, the TCEQ will notify the city once we can rescind the ball water notice, and it's our hope that we can get a positive word um, at least late, late tonight or early on uh, tomorrow morning uh, because we would love to see uh, schools resume, uh, businesses continue to function and open up if they have had to close, and, um, and if there are any surgeries that are having to be postponed, hopefully they can proceed on tomorrow. So that's where, that's where we are, okay? Uh, and, and I will take, at this point, any questions that you may have. Mayor, one, 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 one at a time. Mr. Mayor, people who live in, say, West Houston, in the fourth largest city, wonder, you know, a plant goes down on the east side, why do I have to abide by this notice? Can you someone explain the, East water the logistics of the water system here? The East Water Purification Plant provides water to pretty much the city as a whole, with the exception of Kingwood and those who receive service from the Clear Lake Water Authority. They have their own sort of systems. Uh, but the East Water Purification uh, provides uh, water to the entire city, in addition to some muds that are adjacent, they are very much adjacent, and that's the reason. And even though we don't have any evidence of contamination, uh, and even though the PSI uh, fell below, let's say, for, uh, for 14 of them less than two minutes and for two of them about 30 minutes, out of abundance of caution, uh, that's why the notice was given to everybody. Yes? You said you possibly want to make a decision on the boil water lotus late tonight. Can you make that decision before the 3 a.m. read of the samples? Only we're working in collaboration with TCEQ. Uh, they know that uh, the samples have been collected. They're in, in, in the incubation stage right now. Uh, during the course of the day, you know, we'll take a look to see whether or not there's any um, contamination of any kind. We'll continue to work very closely with the TCEQ. In the end, it will be their call. So at the, at the latest, uh, we anticipate um, a, a report, clean report coming, let's say 3 a.m. at the latest. Could it be before? Possibly. Uh, depending on how TCEQ read the data. Okay? Yes, sir. Can you elaborate on why redundancies did not take over when a transformer two, failed? Two transformers two failed. Transformers they failed can, or they, is there a need for an additional redundancy that does not exist in the system? The first transformer failed, and then the redundant one was the second transformer, 
which coincidentally and uniquely also fell. So there were two transformers. Uh, one was the backup to the first. They both fell. And then you do have backup generation. Uh, but when you have the two, and Carol, you t tell me if, if, if I'm misstating anything. Yes, when you have the two transformers that fail, one was the backup. And you can connect to the grid where the power was running. And you can connect to your generators. Then you have a very unique and unfortunate situation. Now, we, I have instructed Public Works uh, to do an overall review of our system, a diagnostic review, uh, to see how we prevent this from happening again. I will tell you we had a similar problem uh, last year, I believe, at the Hex Center, uh, where on a nice day, uh, the power also failed. So that occurred before. This is not the first. Uh, it's the first in this particular situation, uh, but the backup was the second transformer for the system, for whatever reason. And I'm not, a, I'm not the technical person. I can't tell you why both fail. But, uh, you know, stuff, I will say stuff does happen. It's unfortunate. A lot of people were impacted and are impacted. Certainly apologize for that, um, but we'll do a diagnostic review and work with all of our partners uh, to assess the situation and to mitigate a future occurrence of this kind. Yes. People all around Houston are obviously very angry today. And one of the questions they are asking is, I know you were making a decision during that time in between the outage, uh, during the time between there and the notification, but why couldn't Houstonians have been given any information during that time just so that they could make their own educated decisions? Well, but that's why we have the process in place. This is a situation in which you had 21 sensors uh, that indicated uh, after there was a power disruption between 10.30 and um, 12.30, but starting at 11, at 11 o'clock, 21 sensors indicated that the power would drop below 35 PSI. That doesn't trigger a ball water notice, okay? That doesn't trigger a ball water notice. And the, and, the, and the PSIs didn't just drop automatically when the power was disrupted. It was during the course of the day. So when 21 of the sensors dropped below 35, that didn't trigger ball water notice. When 16 of those 20 dropped below 20 PSI, okay, and 14 of them dropped below uh, PSI for less than two minutes, okay, then still there was not the thinking that was going to trigger. And two of them dropped below PSI for 30 minutes. So less than two minutes for most of them, 14, 30 minutes for two, and so the thinking was it was not going to trigger a need for a ball water notice, uh, and, there was, and there was no alarm. And even now, we can't, you know, uh, uh, my, my, and again, again, my notion is that water is safe, but between 2.43 p.m. up to 6.40 p.m., the team, Houston team, was in collaboration with TCA, TCEQ. Everybody's looking at the data. Everybody's looking at the data. A decision was then made out of an abundance of caution, okay, to then issue the ball water notice. And under the normal processes, you have a city, municipality, has 24 hours to issue the ball water notice from the time of the incident. You have 24 hours. So um, I can understand people being angry, but what I can say to people is that this was a, a situation uh, that was not being overlooked, ignored. Uh, teams were in, our electrician was in, and as you can see, the power was restored at 12.30 p.m. Center Point was looking at it. We were in collaboration with TCEQ, and a decision was made out of an abundance of caution to issue the ball water notice. Okay, I will tell you, having experience in going through Harvey, when, the, when our Northeast water purification plant was totally underwater, in that particular case, we came close to 20 PSIs, but we never issued a ball water notice. We never did, okay? Um, so 
Uh, I can understand people's concern when we finally did it, uh, but do understand we have tw we had 24 hours in this case uh, in our com collaboration. Everybody looking at the data, looking at the sensors, sensors and what the read was. A decision was made out of an abundance of caution to issue the ball water notice, and that is what we did. Yes. It's also very important. Go, go. It's also very important to note that we had no indication that the system had been infiltrated. That it that it un, unlike when we had the uh, 96 inch line break where we knew that the system had been exposed, that the potential for contamination to get in. In this particular case, the system had not not had any any indication that we had had the potential for contamination to get in while we went through this, which was why we went through the process of calibrating the the pressure reads and working with CCEQ over the course of the afternoon. Um, and it really was at the at the end of the day that we said, you know, um, out of an abundance of caution, and you know the fact that we did dip below that we said, you know, um, out of an abundance of caution, and you know the fact that we did dip below that 20 psi that the, that the issuance needed to happen. But we had no indication. We still have no indication that uh, that the system was compromised at any point, um, and that that it had any of the uh, the the type of catastrophic. Um, potential that uh, pre that a larger event might have might have had and caused an immediate notice, which is what you got in the when we had the Clinton Drive um, um, failure that happened. So in this case, it was it was the process working through, um, and and we still do not have any indication that we had any intrusion or anything that got into the system at all. Um, but we are following through the process to make sure that we ensure for everybody that the water is safe. What time, can you just reiterate, sorry, what time did it drop below the regulatory levels, the 20? Go oh, no, yeah. Sure, so uh, the first sensors alarmed at uh, 1058, that we were below 35. Um, the second sensors alarmed, uh, the 16 sensors alarmed at 11 a.m., that it was below 21. At 1102, 14 sensors were back above 20. At 1130, the two remaining sensors were back above 20. So before 11 o'clock, they were below the regulatory levels, right? Uh, it wasn't until 11 a.m. Uh, they were below 35, but still above the emergency regulatory levels um, at, at 1058. At 11 a.m., 16 simper sensors dipped below the, reg the emergency regulatory level. So even though you guys didn't realize at the time this would trigger a boil water notice, don't you still think it's important that the water, the water pressure still went below the regulatory levels around 11 a.m. and again, we didn't find out until, I know you guys have 24 hours, but. Yeah. Bear in mind, I mean, the conversations with uh, TCQ was at 2.43, started at 2.43. No one said about what notice had to be issued. You had 14 sensors that were below 20 PSI for less than two minutes, okay? There was no indication, as Director Haddock has indicated, that there was any intrusion in the system. There was no indication. And you had two sensors, too, that stayed below 20, uh, 20 PSI for, 20, for 30 minutes. And the power was restored to the entire system at 1230. So there was no indication there was any intrusion. And you had a dippage that was significant within a uh, short period of time in comparison to when the 90, was it the 96? When the 96 uh, rupture took place and the power dropped, it stayed below and I experienced that as well, okay? It stayed below. This did not compare at all to what took place then with the 96 inch uh, dis uh, power. Uh, what about yeah. last year, the February freeze? You mentioned we're gonna review what actions need to be taken. Can you talk already the, about what specific? Well, the February freeze is a totally sort of different matter. You lost power and water and things remained down for several days, okay? For several days. We are talking about 14 of your sensors falling below 20 psi for less than two minutes. So you, let's, you know, let's not necessarily compare uh, February windstorm Uri with this situation. We do have two transformers that malfunction, and so we do need to do a diagnostic test analysis on why that occurred and how we can prevent that from happening again. Can you talk quickly about the infrastructure at that plant? I saw some pictures where you see uh, molded and rusted equipment. Can you dive into the last time you toured the facility and um, how they're keeping up to date with we their- We provide equipment? regular maintenance to all of those facilities. In this case, there were two transformers. I know people are looking for some other things out there. 
there were two transformers that failed. Would I, would uh, we, would we prefer that not to occur? No, okay. Uh, but the team was, was on, on it. They reviewed it. The electrician was out there within 30 minutes. Within 30 minutes, they were out there. And then Centerpoint was also out there. Now, um, do, you, do you want to give a, a ball water notice to a city of 2 million plus people? No. And affect schools and businesses and surgeries? No. But at the same time, after looking at the data, working in collaboration with TCEQ and our partners, out of an abundance of caution, the decision was made to do it. Mayor, on yes, the uh, backup generators, you mentioned them earlier. Yes. Energy tells us there were 32 of them at the Federal Road plant. Um, they were available and ready, but were not turned on. Just to clarify, did the city ever request from Energy that, that Energy turn those on? And if not, why not? And again, uh, I'm going to let Carol explain it because, as, as it has explained to me. So, no, uh, so we did not request the backup generators be turned on because our actual um, um, primary feed through the grid was actually still up and providing electricity. The failure was inside the plant that was between the, the supply side and getting to our uh, treatment facility. And so even if the backup generators had been on, we would have had the same problem. And so the, the, the primary focus in that two-hour window was getting those transformers um, reset, getting that, that backup and getting the, the power through it. So we did not call for the backup generators, um, but they would not have made a difference since that was not the, the, the supply of power was not the issue. And a brief follow-up to a question over there earlier. Um, you mentioned the sensors. Where, where were they located? Were they spread throughout the city, or were they just at that one plant? Uh, so we have sensors throughout the city. The 21 that alarmed are primarily um, kind of the, the plant is located near the intersection of Clinton and Federal Road, so on the east side. Uh, the majority of the sensors were kind of in a kind of a swath that uh, went basically from there just inside 610 kind of down, and then there were a couple uh, that uh, continued on a little bit in the northwest area. And let me just say, because the, the second transformer was the backup to the first, and it also failed, uh, that's why I've ordered a diagnostic review and bringing in an outside team to look and see, to assess what took place there and how that can be mitigated in, in the future. But the second transformer was the backup to the first. Okay, any other, any other? Yes, sir. Yes, First sir. of all, I just want to be clear. What specifically did the power outage affect? Was it the treatment process or was it the ability to pump the finished water out to the system? So it was both. Um, so when it affected the entire plant, um, it affected the treatment plants from treating water, um, but it also impacted the ability for us to pump water um, through the, the pumps that actually push it into the transmission system. Um, that was actually what caused the pressure loss. Uh, we had enough water in the ground storage tanks. Uh, it was the pushing the water into the system that, that, that resulted in the pressure loss. Can you also explain again about the generators? I'm, I'm, because there's a lot of people that were asking that why wasn't there something that just instantly prevented that power disruption? I understand you have to call for the backup generators to come up, but is there nothing on site given that PSI is such a critical component of water treatment? Isn't there anything on, is there anything on site that could have prevented that interruption in power at all? So that is actually one of the questions that we will be working with the forensics um, to, to ask that specific question. Uh, we, we had, you know, state of, you know, practice uh, redundancy built into our system, but we're going we're gonna to push ourselves to go beyond that and ask those questions. Uh, the, the feed fed the entire plant and those pumps. Do they need to be evaluated different? That's, that's going to be some of the questions that we ask uh, through this, this after action review. And let me just say to you, that was the question <clears throat> that I asked. Okay, um, because we are building, designing a resilient, sustainable system. So when I got the call on yesterday and they told me there was a power disruption, the question that I immediately asked, did the generators kick on? And I was told, uh, no, Mayor, the generators didn't kick on, and I asked why. Okay, why did they not kick on? Okay, um, and then through, um, a lot of conversations were taking place, and they got back and said, transformers malfunction. And I asked, why? Okay. Um, and so what we are going to do, and what I've instructed Houston Public Works, uh, is to do a diagnostic review. 
to explain to me exactly you know, what took place and how we can prevent it from taking place again, or at least to mitigate. Okay? But the second transformer was intended to back up the first. And then if you have the generators in place when the grid power goes out, uh, and then if the transformers are in between, um, then I'm still not a happy trooper. So those are the questions that I've asked. And what I would say to the people in the city of Houston, we'll work through the system. We'll do a diagnostic review. Um, and so um, we'll, we'll address that situation. Okay, any other questions on this subject? Does the city plan to distribute any water today? And if not, why not? Um, if there are certain areas, for example, or facilities that need water, we, we will certainly do our best to make them available. Um, but from all indications, this is not like when a storm you're in when you lost power and water. You can boil your water and then and then move forward. Some of the businesses are doing it. For example, we there's no in, uh, disruptions. For example, at the airports, they're moving forward. And when it's lifted, is it going to be piecemeal or is it going to be lifted citywide? Entire city. The, the, entire city. The entire city. You talking about with the, if the, the law water notice is suspended, yeah. it'll be for the entire city. And again, Kingwood and those serviced by Clear Lake Water Authority are not impacted. Yes. Yeah, I mean, if, for example, with the mayor's office, people with disabilities, if there are people who are needing it, um, we certainly will be doing our best to provide water, water, water for them. And then we've had some other companies to reach out and say, if if, if we need their assistance, they're prepared to do that. Okay. I just have a quick clarification sure. question. Sure. Does TCEQ have to order the boil water notice? Yes, they are the ones. So the, the city, does this so, so the city of Houston issues the boil water notice, but we do that in consultation, and uh, basically we get concurrence from TCEQ that based on the data they reviewed, that they concur that we need to issue a boil water notice, and then as the owner of the utility, we actually issue it, and that's why we issued it at 647. But you have to do it with TCEQ's permission, basically? Process. So, it, yes, we, we worked with them on the data that we had. They had they reviewed the data. Um, you know, there, there were questions throughout the course of the day whether or not that we had actually tripped enough triggers to, to require it because they rebounded so quickly. Um, but we worked with them on the data. We did the back calibration, and, and they confirmed that reviewing the data, they 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 agreed and instructed us to, to move forward with the boil water notice. And then just a clarification on what's the potential that can happen when the PSA, PSI falls that low? So when the PSI gets below 20, um, and, and the state can certainly, because this is a statewide requirement, but that is the potential that you could actually have contaminants introduced into the system. And that's why they require that boil water notice if it goes below 20 PSI for an extended period of time. Um, it is not one of the primary listed. If you go out to the state code and look at the five conditions, you know, you have um, filters or you have too high a turbidity coming out of the plant or you have known contaminants. We didn't trip any of those because um, we, we didn't have any of those conditions. This is one that is a um, consult with TCEQ on the data that you have available. Um, you know, the, the professionals on both sides reviewed the data, reviewed the information. And, and said that, that we felt like we needed to, out, out of an abundance of caution, make sure that, that we got through this. Again, we did not have any indication yesterday, today, of any intrusion in the system at all. Any plans to add text messaging to the advisories for the, for the city and not just email? Some people were saying they did not get that email message for hours. We did send it out Alert Houston. Yeah, did I you? know I talked to Chief Bunick with the uh, Director of Homeland Security. And on the emergency provision, instructed them to send out text messages. Okay. That's, we know, though, a lot of people didn't get those messages until about 1030. That's the time we got from a lot of our viewers. So we just didn't know, were there any plans to make that earlier if the decision was made at about 640? Uh, let me just say, um, I know we relied heavily on uh, getting the social media aspects, sending out the emails. And then I know I talked to Chief Bunick myself and instructed that the text messages go out. So any way to improve that? We know there are a lot of people who aren't signed up for these messages and things right. like that. And of course, it's important information. Yeah. Uh, so the first thing is, I would say for everybody, uh, it is important to register with Alert Houston. It is, it is one of the, the primary channels during emergencies that we, we transmit information. Um, and it, it is certainly, uh, we've already got it on our list on the after action review of making sure that that uh, notification happens earlier uh, in the past. Uh, it, it, um, 
we were in weather emergencies, so we were already in those communication channels. In this case, it was not a weather emergency. Uh, so we're absolutely going to review our processes on that and, um, and evaluate um, the, the revisions to that process to see if that happens simultaneously. So when did you all notify the other municipalities? So the I mean, phone. Did all of that happen at the same time? So the phone calls we had a uh, the team that manages our contracts started making phone calls uh, right after 6:40, um, when we had the phone calls, emails, texts um, to all of our contract uh, customer contacts that we have uh, available to us. Those calls had all been completed before eight um, to to notify all those adjacent that take water from our our main water system. And, and, and are you are you looking at ways to send those text alerts and those emails to everybody within a geographic area? Is there a way to do that now, or if not, is that something you're looking at doing? Because we have heard from a lot of people that did not get the text, did not get the email. I know, uh, I know, Chief Bunick, but the uh, 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 Department of Homeland Security is taking a look at all of that, and so we'll see how we can certainly improve it and make sure that it's much more ubiquitous. So we'll take a look at that. What about the emergency alert system? Given this was a civil emergency. Um, I thought I issued that, but did, I, did it not go out? Um, I, I, that, that is definitely something that we will check with the, the, the team internally and, and find out what the, the processes were. Um, it, didn't, it didn't trigger over to that this time. Um, and and I, I will ask uh, for us to review as part of what the mayor's asked us to review those processes to see um, if that should have. Yeah. But Mr. Mayor, you did ask for a triggering of the EAS? I, I wanted the notices to go out. Of the alert Houston. Of the okay. alert Houston, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So Ben, there, there. This is the third water bond notice, as far as that I can recall. Uh, one dealt with the 96-inch uh, pipeline uh, uh, breakage, and in that situation, your PSI level was down for quite some time. Okay. Didn't even compare, come close to this. It was down for quite some time. Uh, the second was winter storm Uri and we were without power and pressure for several days. Uh, uh, in this particular situation, as we have already described, uh, you've, you've, um, you've heard several times when the PSI levels dropped below 20 and how long that was. So uh, again, out of abundance of caution in collaboration with uh, TCEQ, uh, the ball water notice was issued, and then we'll do a diagnostic review uh, to see how we uh, can mitigate uh, the situation from happening again. Certainly want to say to uh, the people in the city of Houston, uh, uh, certainly apologize for the disruptions. Kids having to miss school, businesses impacted, even some elective surgeries having to be postponed. Uh, but our hope is by late tonight or early tomorrow morning, uh, we'll get a positive response. Um, from TCEQ and that the ball water notice can can be lifted. Um, that, so that's that's where we are. Uh, let me let me thank you all, um, and I hope uh, we've answered um, whatever questions that you may have. Mayor, the first event you mentioned was that the entire city, or is this the first time the entire city? Said that, that was that was the, uh, the 96 was, inch was the entire that was uh, a, the, the entire, entire city. main system. Um, URI was the main system as well as some of our isolated. Yeah. And with the 96 inch, I was, that did not include Kingwood and the Clear Lake, but it was the entire it was the entire system. Okay. All right. Um, so if We've been listening to the mayor telling us that the boil water notice for Houston remains in effect. He's hoping it could be lifted later today or early tomorrow. Yeah, all of this caused by a brief power failure at three water plants Sunday morning. The mayor saying that boil water notice was issued out of an abundance of caution, but of course caused a lot of concern and problems for folks around town. Stephanie Whitfield live in the newsroom with more. Steph. Yes, Mayor Sylvester Turner has been recapping exactly what went wrong yesterday and what has to happen in order to lift the boil water notice. So here's what we know about yesterday at this point. Yesterday morning, power went out at several different treatment plants. Um, at that, at, power went out at the water treatment plant impacting several different uh, 
caught, sorry, I'm going to start over right now. So what we know at this point is yesterday power went out at the water treatment plant and that triggered the water pressure to drop at several different locations that happened. The power was out for about two hours, but water pressure dropped at most of those sensor locations for about two minutes. Two of them, the pressure was low for 30 minutes. And because of that, that triggered uh, conversations with TCEQ in the city of Houston to uh, decide whether or not they wanted to issue the boil water notice. That did happen last night at around 645. Now, what has to happen for everything to go back to normal and for the boil water notice to be lifted? Uh, several things have to happen. So first of all, the city of Houston had to submit a plan to TCEQ. That happened last night, TCEQ, TCEQ approved. So now uh, water, water samples had to be taken at 30 different locations across the city. That happened this morning twice. Now, so those water samples were sent to a lab and the waiting game begins for uh, 18 hours. Those water samples have to sit in the lab to see if any bacteria grows um, and if those samples have been con contaminated and the earliest that those samples can be tested is at three o'clock tomorrow morning. So that's what we're waiting on at this point. Once the results come in, the TCEQ and city of Houston can decide whether or not to lift the boil water notice. And in the meantime, the city is trying to figure out exactly what went wrong with the power outage and generators failing um, and hopefully prevent this from happening again. Ron and Reka, I'm going to send it back to you.